Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed the uh, wrap up on the order in which to adjust your sleeve for ease, cap height, bicep ease. I did that whole thing last week just to give everybody sort of an order of fitting, um, you know, adjustments or what you should look at first and then what you should double check. So I hope you enjoyed that. I do want to start this um, this Fit Tip Tuesday with a public service announcement about trusting the shade to protect you from sunburn. Now I know this is not a sewing topic, but I I spent the day watching my daughter play volleyball on Sunday, and I was trying to stay in the shade. And you can see I am very burnt here and on my forehead and my nose and my face. So I don't have any makeup on today. I'd, so I apologize if I'm frightening anybody with my <laughs> sunburn. But just know if you're going to spend the day outside, even if you're going to be in the shade, put some sunblock on because I am very sad that I burnt myself as badly as I did. Um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll pull through. But, um, you know, just be careful with the sun. Summer's coming. And I want everyone to have a nice, fun, unsunburned summer. What I want to do today is sort of take a deep dive into slope of the shoulder. Now, this is my little mini dress form that I use sometimes to work out some little design details or other things on. And you can see here what I'm talking about is right here, the slope of the shoulder from the neck down to the tip of the shoulder. Okay, so that's generally what people consider the slope of your shoulder on your body. And what I want to talk about today is how that slope of your shoulder is um, fitted or how you can fit your shirt pattern to your slope of your shoulder. And I want to point out some things that you might not realize um, or some things that are commonly considered the slope of the shoulder, which are actually not the slope of the shoulder on the pattern pieces. So what I want to show you here is I have a um, a little mini, this is just really a little tiny mini, you know, quarter pattern here that I did. It's too big for my, my mini dress form, so I also made one to fit the dress form to show you. But what I want to show you here is I've pinned together the side seam and the shoulder seam, and you can see from this example that the center front and back edges are also parallel to each other. And with all of that pinned together, as if it were sewn together, you can see where the slope of the shoulder actually is on this muslin. Is it the actual edge of the front or back shoulder seam? No, it's actually whatever the folded edge is or the shape that's created by sewing your shoulder seams together. So I kind of highlighted this blue line here. That's actually the slope of the shoulder that's created by the angles of the front and back seam edges. Okay, so if I take these apart, I'm just going to take them apart. You can see that um, if I line them up with the grid on my cutting board, lining up my center front with the grid, you can see that the front uh, shoulder seam is not as angled as the back shoulder seam. So if you were going to say, oh, here's the slope of my shoulder, the edge of the back pattern piece or the edge of the front pattern piece, in this pattern, they don't match and neither one is the actual slope of the shoulder. It's when you put them together and you find that. Now, I thought it'd be interesting to drape the pieces, drape the armhole on this mini dress form. Now, here's the thing about this mini dress form. It is proportional. There is no um, variation in the ball of the shoulder. If I hold it this way, you can see that everything is straight. The, the seam on the shoulder is right in the center of the shoulder. And there's no 
no body specific issues to deal with on this mini dress form because it's um, an industry standard in a mini size. So the interesting thing is if you drape um, a set of bodice pieces using an industry standard and what I did here was I actually just laid my front on top of my back lining up um, my you know side seam and making sure that my um, center front was parallel to my center back and you can see what I ended up with was the angle that I dashed out here so even with a perfectly symmetrical dress form the front shoulder seam was less angled than the back shoulder seam and what can happen is okay so what I would like to do um, is show you I'm gonna pin these um, seams together and I'm gonna try it on this mini dress form just to show you so I'm just pinning them and then I'm just going to drape this right on here. I really didn't worry about fitting the bust here. I'm really just focusing on the armhole. But what I want to show you is, if I get that right up there, I traced off the center front and back lines. And then I also um, traced the edge of the arm hole so you could see but I just want to show you here if I pin these together I'm just gonna pin my side seams together like this you can see that this sleeve and I'm just gonna clip my seam allowance once I added the seam allowance I'm just gonna clip this so it so what I want to show you is, you can see from the front and from the side and from the back, this is sitting right on the shoulder as it should. Okay, it's laying perfectly square with the shoulder of this little dress form. And that happened because I, um, you know, I, dra I draped it on there so I knew it was going to fit. But my point is, um, you can see that The slope of the shoulder fits this and I thought it's just interesting to look at and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you what can happen if you change the angles of your front and back shoulder seams to get it to fit your body for certain um, you know for certain body specific issues all right, so I just wanted to show you here. Here is another shirt pattern. Um, I get these pattern pieces by shrinking some of my actual patterns that I sell. So you can see here for this top, again, the front is a little bit more straight than the back. So neither one of these is the actual slope of the shoulder. It's again what happens when they're sewn together but what I want to do is show you here for example if I were to if I needed to move my shoulder seam forward because the ball of my shoulder was coming forward of my head I would need more room in the back than the front and what that would look like is I would have to actually you know first I would sort of measure you know with um, a test garment how much I had to remove from the front to get the front shoulder to lay nicely to the tip of the shoulder and if I had a forward ball of the shoulder I would have to move it or shorten this amount so let's say we were going to shorten it by a half an inch okay I'm just going to draw that here. Okay, so what I've done here is I've changed the angle of the center of the shoulder seam in the front to shorten the length here 
because the my ball of the shoulder is forward, right? And then in the back, I would need to add probably a like amount because um, if it's too short in the back and it's too long in the front, I would do something like this. Okay, and I'm sort of free, um, free drawing this little part of the extended armhole, so I'm going to check it. So basically, if I fold this on my new shoulder edge here, and I then attach it to here, you can see I still have, uh, let me just pin it like this. Okay, you can see I still have a smooth um, transition front to back, and my front shoulder is actually now more angled than my back. My back shoulder, if we looked at it, um, you know, straight on, is actually not as angled anymore because we had to reach the outer part of that shoulder seam closer to the front to fit a forward ball of the shoulder. So now, if I were to cut this out and I'm just gonna quickly cut out this okay let's um, look at this so you can see there's the slope of my shoulder here okay and notice by pinning it flat lining up the side seams pinning the shoulder and making sure our center front and back are parallel with each other, you can see that what I've done is I've essentially increased the amount of back shoulder that's going to come around to the front. And you can see by the tip of the shoulder, more is coming towards the front to reach around to the front for a forward ball of the shoulder. So I just find this really, really fascinating that you can change these things and let's do a little experiment here. I am going to trace these little minis on here and then what we'll do is we'll make that same adjustment on the mini and let's see if it still fits. Let's see what happens. I'm going to just, I'm literally just tracing exactly what I draped here. And what I'm going to do is, here's my front. All right, so what I'm going to do here is let's try adding to the back, or I'm sorry, shortening the front first. Let's shorten it a half an inch like this. Okay, and then let's add to the back, the same half inch. All right, so let's see what happens when I cut these out. All right. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to draw my little quarter inch seam allowances that I added here. There's one quarter inch and here's another quarter inch. All right, so let's pin these together. I realize this is paper, but I think I'll be able to illustrate for you what's happening. And then I'm going to just flip it around. And I think what I'm going to do is, let me just cut off, I'm just going to dash in the quarter inch here. 
so I can get rid of the seam allowance around the neckline because I want it to lay nicely. So just cutting off the seam allowance. I'm going to cut off the seam allowance on the armhole as well. So again, I'm just dashing that in. My quarter inch. And I'm gonna, let me just quickly cut that off. All right, and I'm just gonna pin that back like that. All right, now let's put this on our little our little form and see what happens. All right, so we're putting this back on. And what I wanna show you here is that we changed the angle of the front and back shoulder seams, but we did not change the slope of the shoulder. So I've pinned it back on. And what I want you to notice here is, you can see from the front side and back, it's still agreeing with the slope of the shoulder. What has changed is the position of the shoulder seam. I'm just gonna dash it in orange so you can see. And you can see, I believe, from the side here, that the shoulder seam is now angling forward. So we changed the position of the shoulder seam. So the goal today was for me to explain to you that the edges of the front and back shoulder seams are not the slope of the shoulder. It's when you sew them together and try it on, together those two shapes create the slope of your shoulder. If you make like adjustments to the front and back edges, meaning if you take away a certain amount from the front but then add it to the back, you're not changing the slope because you made like adjustments, you're just shifting the shoulder seam forward or backwards. To change the actual slope of the shoulder, you would need to make the same adjustment, meaning take away from the front and the back at the tip of your shoulder to create more of an angle or more of a slope, or add to the tip of your shoulder front and back to make less of a slope or it may be that you need to do those adjustments at the neckline edge. And I have a bunch of tutorials showing you how to adjust your shoulder seam to change the actual slope of your shoulder, and I will put links to those below so you can check those out. Hope that kind of clears up if you were wondering about slope of shoulder, you know, where it is on the pattern versus where it is or what it looks like on your body and how those two things relate to each other. Um, I hope you're enjoying um, Shirt Month at J. Stern Designs. Next week, I'm going to show you some other exciting things about the sleeve for Fit Tip Tuesday, so I hope you'll join me for that. This Friday, I will be back with part two of the Easy Breezy Summer shirt that we're going to be making. So I hope you join me for that, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day.